Okay, so here we're going to be looking at question 26 on the Enger 2018 paper. In this question, we're given a circuit which has a battery, a power source up here, and then three resistors drawn like this. Now, the battery provides a power of 18 watts, which we're told in the question, and we have these three resistors, X, Y, and Z, which are all equal, so I've given them a resistance of R. Now, we don't know if we're going to have to use the resistances yet, but since we've got a circuit question, and these are the only three components other than the battery, I figure we might as well label the resistances on. Now, before we even read the question, the first thing which I always think is useful to do in circuit questions is to redraw the circuit. So, that's what I've done just below. Now, this circuit doesn't look too different, but basically I've just made it much clearer that X and Y are in a parallel combination. So we know this because the wire tra travelling between X and Y doesn't have any other components in it, so we can easily move the node down and get the configuration drawn below. So, after we've redrawn the circuit, we can read the actual question, which asks us, what is the power dissipated as heat in resistor X? That is, the resistor over in the parallel combination. And then the question gives us a range of solutions. So let's look at our circuit again. Now, we're told that our battery produces a power of 18 watts. Now, the equation which comes up most often when talking about electrical power is that the power is equal to the voltage through an element, or across an element, multiplied by the current through an element. So this tells us that our battery must have a voltage across it, V, and a current, I. If we look later on in our circuit, we can see that our current is going to have to split into two different currents down at the point where the circuit splits into two different wires, going into X and going into Y. Now, since the resistances are equal in both X and in Y, we know that the currents going into X and Y both have to be the same. This is stated more formally with Kirchhoff's current law, but since the resistances are equal here, we can safely assume that the currents are going to be equal. Now, that's all we can really get from looking at our circuit. There's nothing else really which we can label on. So it's probably best to think about equations which are also going to be useful to help solve the problem. So an equation which is always useful when looking at circuits is Ohm's law. That is, the voltage across an element is equal to the current through it multiplied by its resistance. So let's consider Ohm's law for our circuit as a whole. Now, if we consider the total voltage of the circuit, that is V, then that's going to be equal to the current through the circuit I multiplied by the total resistance of the circuit. Now, this total resistance is really the effective resistance of the circuit, and that's given by the resistance of all the components which make up the circuit together. Now, often when looking at circuits questions, I think the best thing to do is probably to try and explore all options with it, and that is to try and find out everything you can about the circuit. So we've already labelled on everything we can. Now, we might as well try and solve Ohm's law for the circuit as a whole. Now, the reason we do this is really that it would give us a nice expression for either the voltage, the current, or the resistance in terms of the variables we have written down. And it might even eliminate one of them, which would make our problem a bit simpler. So let's have a go at solving this. Now, the easiest thing to do is to look at the total resistance of the circuit. So we can find that by adding together the resistance of the parallel section, consisting of resistors R, um, X and Y, sorry. And we can add that to the resistance through resistor Z. So to find the resistance through X and Y together, we can use our law for adding resistances of parallel components. So to find the total resistance, we can do 1 over the resistance through x, that is 1 over r, plus 1 over the resistance through y, which is just r again, giving us 2 over r, and therefore rxy equals r over 2. Then substituting this into our original equation, we find that rxy plus rz is just 3r over 2. Then if we substitute this into our equation we began with, we just find that the total voltage is equal to 3ir over 2. Now if we substitute this into our equation for power, we find that we get an expression for our power, which is just the 18 watts we were given in the question, in terms of our current I and our resistance R. So this is probably going to be handy when we look at resistor X a bit more closely. We can also go ahead and rearrange that to give us I squared R equals 2P over 3. Now this isn't necessarily an obvious step at first, and you don't have to do it just yet. It's just it does come in handy later, so we might as well do it now. Now that we've looked at the circuit as a whole, we might as well focus in on our focus, x. So, let's look at the power through x. That is going to be the voltage through x, vx, multiplied by the current through x, ix. 
Now we know already from our diagram that the current through x is just going to be i over 2. However, we're not quite sure what the voltage through x is, so we should eliminate that from the equation, which we can do by writing it as ix squared multiplied by the resistance r. Now the reason we can do this is by using Ohm's law. If we use Ohm's law on our resistance x specifically, then we find that the voltage through x is equal to the current through x multiplied by its resistance r. So by substituting that into our original equation, Vx multiplied by Ix, we get this expression here. Since we know what Ix is, it's just I over 2, we can substitute this in, giving us that the power through x is equal to I squared R over 4. Now handily, we worked out I squared R earlier on, it's just 2P over 3. So we can substitute this into our expression to find that the power through x is just a quarter multiplied by 2P over 3 where p is just the power we were given earlier on in the question, 18 watts. So substituting this in, we get an answer of 3 watts, and therefore the answer to our question is C.